Now, sometimes when you want to cut calculate a load of saturation pressures using Magnusat, what you will find is that certain calculations crash the kernel when you're running on the server and to an extent when you're running locally. So I'm just going to show you an example of this. So we're just um, loading in this Excel file, example crash, which has four melt inclusions. And we're just going to inspect the data to start with. And then what we're going to do is we are going to run this cell, which calculates saturation pressure for all of those melt inclusions at 1250 degrees C. So we're going to run this and you can see it's printing what sample it's working on. And this is the key error that some of you may have encountered. So it says kernel restarting. So basically it hasn't found a solution and that has killed the kernel. So what you want to do is you want to say, okay. And then you want to look very, very carefully at which sample this was. And you can see this was test three. Okay, so now what you can do is if you really want, sometimes when you're running hundreds, this sample might converge if you run it on its own. It's definitely worth a try if you're particularly attached to this particular melt inclusion, say it's your favorite. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start again from the top. So run down to load. We're not gonna run this cell because it is gonna kill our kernel, which we absolutely do not want to do. And in this simple example, I know that uh, this melt inclusion is uh, row three, so number two in Python. You could also filter it out based on its name, like we do down here in a second. So you can adapt that. But very simply, what we want to do is we want to check, is it this sample a problem, even if it's run on its own, even if we allocate all of the kernel resources to it. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. So it crashes regardless. So what you could do, if you were really attached to this melt inclusion, you could try tweaking the temperature. And this is what uh, a lot of people used to do in the old web app. So again, we're going to load and run through. Um, and then we're going to run this and see if it works at 1240. This is being very slow because my computer is also trying to record my screen. So you can see, oh, well, in this case, this particular melt inclusion did converge at 1240. So it's really, really minor variations in temperature are sometimes needed to get convergence. But say we don't want to faff around with this for all 100 melt inclusions today. So what we can do is we can make a copy of the data frame. So all of the melt inclusions are stored in a special my file structure. We can get a pandas data frame out of this by doing the file structure, get data. We're then going to make a copy of this data frame here. And then we're going to filter this data frame to remove all the rows where the index is equal test three. So that's the sample name in this case. We then have to feed this back into a new batch file object called my file two. So the file name has to be none. The label you're telling it you want sort of the labels to be the index of the filtered data frame here. And then the data frame you actually want to convert into a batch file It's called filter, so that's here. And then we're gonna run all of the rest of them at 1250 and what you can see is that that has worked so it's a bit of a faff but at the moment this is the best solution to those ones that crash